Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and welcome to the next lesson in my Want to Switch tutorial series, taking a look at making the switch to Avid's Media Composer or if you're new to the post-production world, giving you an overview of Avid's Media Composer, in my opinion, the best non-linear editing application on the market today. Now, in the previous lesson, we took a look at basic editing inside of Avid's Media Composer and we touched a very little bit on effects. In this lesson, we're gonna continue that look at effects. I'm gonna show you probably one of the most common effects that you're gonna use inside of Media Composer. We're gonna talk about keyframing, and then I'm gonna show you titling. And titling inside Media Composer is very different for all of you Final Cut Pro editors from what you're accustomed to. Okay, so before we get started, I wanna remind you that you can download the 30-day free trial of Avid's Media Composer by simply heading on over to Avid's website and clicking on the link to download the 30-day free demo. Okay, so I'm going to hide Firefox and let's command tab into Avid's Media Composer and get started. Okay, now I pretty much want to pick up where we left off in the last lesson. Now, one thing that we were talking about was the transition effect. And you can see on video track two here that I do have a dissolve in here. But what I want to do is I just want to come back and I just want to come down to channel one for a second because what we were talking about was the dip to color transition. And I used the dip to black as an example. But what I want to show you is probably other than the dissolve, the most common transition effect that you're going to use. And I know you're going to use it all the time. And that is the flash to white and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select video track one I'm going to come back and I'm going to hit the backslash key on my keyboard or again if you want the other shortcut for the quick transition it's right up here you can see the quick transition button right there at the top of my timeline you can see that I have the duration set to be five frames and I'm simply going to say add now you'll remember from the last lesson if I come back and I hit play what's going to happen is it's going to do a quick dip to black which is not what I want what I want to do is a quick flash to white so let's come back to the effect right here and I'm just going to park the time bar right there on the middle of the transition now I I know that I'm at the edit point because if I take a look up here in my sequence window, you can see I've got this little half square mark right here signifying that this is the start of this shot. Now, if I come back one frame, you'll see that I'm at the end of the previous shot because I have the little tick mark on the lower right hand corner of this shot. So that's something to keep in mind when you're working, a great way to know if you're at the last frame of one shot or the first frame of the next shot. But what I'm going to do is just start at the first frame of the next shot and I'm going to want to go into effects mode because effects mode is where you're going to do most of the manipulating of effects inside of Avid's Media Composer. And there's a couple ways to get into effects mode. Now for me, I have effects mode mapped as a shortcut onto my keyboard because I use it so much. I have it mapped to Shift and Y. Now why would I have it mapped to Shift and Y? Well, the standard shortcut to go back into edit mode is Y. And since I'm always going into effects mode and then going back into edit mode, it seemed like a logical place to put effects mode at Shift Y and then to go back into edit mode, I can just hit Y. So you can see how you're gonna to start to set up these keyboard shortcuts to give you the best possible workflow. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head into effects mode. Now I said a few ways to do this, my shortcut, Shift and Y, or we can get into effects mode by coming over here and clicking on the effects mode button, or again, right over here with the effects mode button. But I'm just gonna hit Shift and Y on my keyboard. Now it knows to go into this effect and not this one up here, because I'm on video track one. And you'll see up here in the effects editor that I am looking at the dip to color transition. Now you'll see very bare bones in this one. The most important thing obviously is the background color. I'm simply gonna click on the toggle right there and let's just set this color to be of course white. Now the great thing is you'll see that I can set this to be any color. I'll say okay and set it to be white or you'll see that if I come over I have the eyedropper. The eyedropper I can obviously use to eyedrop any color in any shot that I want to have the transition color be. So I'm just going to press Y to get out of effects mode. I'm going to come back and hit play and you'll see when I get to the effect I now have a flash to white. So there you go. We have the dissolve and now we have the flash to color. So those are probably the two most common transitions you're ever going to do in Media Composer very quick to do and very simple. Okay, so let's move on and talk about effects. Now, all of your effects can be found in the same place and that is the effects palette. Again, a couple ways to get to the effects palette. The shortcut on your keyboard, Command and 8 for all of you Mac users, Control and 8 for all of you Windows users. Or you can simply navigate up to Tools and you can come down to Effects Palette right there. So now once the Effects Palette is up, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of effects in here. Now obviously these first effects are Boris Continuum Complete effects that, depending on when you purchased Media Composer, you may have actually gotten a free copy of Boris Continuum Complete 
with Media Composer. So I highly suggest going back to your disks and checking it out. You may actually have these and not even know it and not install them yet. But in most cases, I'm just going to scroll down here, your effects palette is going to start right here at Blend. And you can see that you actually do have a lot of effects inside your effects palette for you to start working with. But where you're probably going to start working, and in most cases where you're going to be going back to all the time, is the Blend section, and you're going to be using 3D Warp. Now I'm going to take 3D Warp, and I'm going to drag it down here, and I'm going to apply it to this clip on Video Track 2. I'm simply going to let go and I'm going to step into effects mode by using my shortcut of shift and Y on my keyboard. And what you're going to see now is that the sequence viewer has switched over to be the effects editor and it's the way that I left it before. And this is actually something that's good that it started this way. Because basically what I'm looking at is a bit of a zoomed back view of my image. Now how I can easily get in and adjust that is right over here with my magnifying glass to obviously enlarge or to reduce. So you can see that I can shrink it down even farther or I can zoom in on it even more. Now here's another great one for you. You're going to notice that I can zoom in a lot. The only problem is how do I now get in and move this wherever I want to see it? Well the great shortcut for this is for all you Mac users you're going to press command and option and you're going to get the little hand so that's obviously control and alt for all you Windows users and now you can drag around inside the frame to zoom in and see whatever part of the frame you want to. But I'm just going to zoom back here just so that I can see the whole shot in the frame just like that. Now, I always refer to 3D Warp as sort of the go-to effect. Why? Because there's so many things that you can do inside of 3D Warp. As you'll see, we can get in, we can corner pin, we can corner track, we can crop, scale, we can adjust the rotation, the position. There's so many different parameters, even adding drop shadows from in here. So you'll see that basically this is going to be your go-to effect for doing any type of, you know, things moving across the screen. You know, you want to do slow scaling on things to make them, you know, appear as though they're moving towards the camera. 3D Warp is what you're going to be constantly going back to. And we're going to get into titles in just a minute. And you're going to see how the 3D Warp plays a huge role on titles. Now, let's talk a little bit about keyframing because obviously it's fairly self-explanatory. So, for example, I want to get in and I want to adjust the scale. So, let's just bump this shot down to be, oh, I don't know, 33%. Now let me just move the effect editor out of the way here because I want to make sure that we're actually looking at video layer 2 right there. So you can see that obviously the video layer 2 is where the effect has been applied. So we want to make sure that we're viewing that. Okay. So you can see that I adjusted the scale on that shot to scale it down. Again, if I wanted to adjust the position, I could simply come over to the position drop down and I could position it anywhere I wanted to in the frame. Great thing is, once I have it where I want, let's just say the upper left hand corner for example, I can step out of the effects editor by simply hitting Y on the keyboard. I can now hit play and you'll see that it just fades in right there upper left hand corner and stays there. A very simple effect to do. I could, you know, tile three of those across the bottom of the screen. We could transition into the shot, have the three of them there. Very quick and very simple to do. And you'll notice that the dissolve that was there originally is still there. So this shot fades in just like that. Very nice. But what if I wanted to actually have this animate from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen? Hmm, I wonder how we would do that. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this dissolve. And we're going to remove this dissolve by coming up and we're going to click on the remove effect button. And what we're going to do is we're going to step back into effects mode by pressing shift and Y on my keyboard. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about keyframing because keyframing is obviously an important technique that you need to understand. Now, keyframing in Media Composer is very simple. You'll see that we have the keyframe button right here that we can click on at any time. Now, I always tell people not to get into the habit of clicking on that keyframe button and you're going to see why in just a second. First, let's position this element where we're going to want it to be. Now, the reason I showed you the plus and minus magnifying glasses is because I'm going to want to zoom back a little bit and then we can really position this shot where we're going to want it to go. So I'm just going to position it outside the frame. Now, you're going to notice that as soon as I grabbed it and moved it, as opposed to moving it over in the effects editor, a keyframe was automatically added for it. What I'm going to do is just hit the delete key on the keyboard and I'm going to backtrack right back to the beginning of this shot and we're going to add a keyframe right there. What we're going to do now is we're going to move to the end of this shot and I'm going to take this element and I'm going to slide it right across the frame right to the other side and you'll see a keyframe has been automatically added. Well guess what, now if I step out of effects mode by hitting Y on my keyboard and I simply hit play, guess what, we now have this effect moving from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Very quick to create, very simple, just like that. But I told you that inside of Media Composer, that might not be the way that you want to create effects. And I'm going to show you why. Let me come back to the first keyframe for one second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate down to the lower right hand corner of the effects editor. And you're going to see that I can show and hide the keyframe graph. So I'm just going to say to show it. 
Now, by adding the keyframe here, what I've actually done is I've added a keyframe for every parameter inside a 3D warp, which I don't really want to do. I really only want to add a keyframe for just the position parameters. So let me just undo everything I've just done in here by pressing Command and Z on the Mac Control and Z on Windows. We're just going to undo that keyframe as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyframe for just the X value. And that can be done very simply by coming over here, right clicking and saying Add Keyframe. I've now added a keyframe for this position right here. What I'm going to do is come right down to the end of this shot. I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard. I'm going to drag this right across. You'll see I now have the spline that's following this shot. And guess what I have now? I now have just the position parameter that's been animated. Now you'll see it's added in keyframes for Y and Z, which is fine if I happen to move this, you know, maybe up this way or something like that. But you know what? I've now, instead of adding a keyframe to everything inside a 3D warp, I've only added the keyframe to just the position parameter. This means now that I can get in and I can start adding keyframes in midway through scaling or rotation or something like that. Working this way gives you more of a finite control over your effects work inside of Media Composer. Now, this is a very basic look at keyframing inside a Media Composer. We're going to get into multiple lessons that's going to look at effects inside a Media Composer and the effects editor specifically. But I wanted to give you a brief overview of understanding how keyframing works and why you should keyframe in a certain way. Now, one thing I do want to show you before we move on is that if I come back to the position keyframe and I right click, you'll see down here that we do have the option of Bezier curve, splines, or linear. This way we don't have ease in and ease outs of our keyframes. I'm just going to switch this to linear. And what's going to happen now when I come back to the beginning and hit play, it's just going to move right across the screen, no easing in and no easing out of the keyframes. So the great thing is, is that depending on what you want your keyframes to do, it's very simple to get in and adjust them inside a media composer by coming right over here and only adjusting the individual keyframes per parameter inside a 3D warp. Okay, so I want to move on now because I want to talk about something else that's very important as well, and that is titling. I'm just going to close the effects editor for just a second because I'm going to want to put a title in over top of this shot. We're just going to put in the title BMXing. Now, titling in Media Composer is a little bit different than in Final Cut Pro because I almost call titling in Final Cut Pro sort of imaginary titling. And the reason I refer to it like that is because you're using this concept called generators, and generators aren't actually physical pieces of media. There's something that's generated by Final Cut Pro. And the problem with them is, is that once they're deleted, they're gone. You end up having to go in and create a new generator to create a new title. Doesn't work the same in Avid's Media Composer. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm just going to come over. I'm going to create a new bin. I'm just going to call this bin graphics, just like that. And what I'm going to do to create a new title in Media Composer is I'm simply going to navigate up to clip and I'm going to come down to new title. The first thing that I'm going to be prompted with before I get into the title tool is, okay, well, hold on a second. Which title tool do you want to use? Do you want to use Marquee or do you want to use the title tool? Now, of course, I'm going to tease Marquee and tell you that I'm going to be showing you Marquee in depth in its own tutorial series because I definitely think it warrants that. In this case, what we're going to do is select the basic title tool. Now, of course, if you only ever wanted to use just the basic title tool, you could simply say persist and then select the title tool. But I'm just going to deselect persist here. And I'm going to say just use the basic title tool. And you'll see now what we have is the Media Composer title tool. And the best way to think of it is a very simplistic version of Photoshop, specifically, obviously, for titles. So let's type in some text. I'm just going to type in, like I said before, BMXing. And you know, let me just say that nothing, of course, says a nice, bold, in-your-face font like Impact. So let's select Impact. And I'm just going to bump the size up. Let's maybe make it, oh, I don't know, 300, just like that. And we'll just stretch it out. It might be a little bit too big, but let's see here. Okay, a little bit too big. So let's just make it about, oh, I don't know, 250. That's pretty good. I don't even mind if it sits on safe picture just like that. So you'll see, very simple to get in and create basic text. Much like in Photoshop, we have the standard text tool that I can click anywhere and I can just type in some text. Again, we have the arrow or the selection tool that we can use to take text. We can move it wherever we want to move it. I'm just going to, of course, select this text here and say delete. We can also create basic shapes inside the title tool like rectangles and squares, obviously circles and ovals, and of course, straight lines. And the great thing with the straight lines is, is that with the straight line tool, I can come down, I can make the line thicker. But more importantly, what I can also do is add arrows to that line. 
Very cool. Now, we're going to get more in-depth in the title tool in its own dedicated tutorial, but I just wanted to show you those to sort of throw them out there. So let me just delete these shapes here. I do want to show you a couple other things that's important, obviously, when working with text. So I'm just going to select BMXing. Now, if I wanted to get in and I wanted to adjust the color of the text, obviously, it's white right now, but let's say I wanted to make it sort of a light blue color. What I'm going to do is simply navigate down to Fill. I'm going to click on it and hold it, and now I can move this tool just out of the way, and I can come down and pick this aqua color here, and there we go. The color has changed right away. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a drop shadow, which we can do right here from within the title tool very simple to do. I'm going to come right over here to my shadow depth and I'm just going to enter a value of 2. And I'm going to hit enter and as soon as I do you can see that I now have a drop shadow going on on BMXing. Now if I don't want to just sort of enter the number what I can always do is just grab the value like that and simply just drag it around the title wherever I'm going to want it to go and you can see the shadow updating the instant I let go of the mouse. But in most cases I do a very standard drop shadow of a value of about 2 and I think that looks pretty good. So like I said, the title tool, quick to get into, very simple to create text, and now here's the difference between Media Composer and Final Cut Pro. I'm going to save this title out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to navigate up here to the upper left-hand corner of the title tool. I'm just going to close the title, and it's going to say to me, well, hold on a second. What do you want to do? Do you want to save this title? Do you not want to save it? Or do you just want to cancel it? Well, I'm going to save this title. It's going to say, well, what do you want to call it? I'm going to call it BMXing, and I'm going to save it into the graphics bin. And the drive is Jesse, that's fine. And the resolution, I can pick whatever resolution, but obviously I'm working at DVC Pro HD MXF. I'm simply going to say save. And now you'll see down here in my graphics bin, there is the physical piece of media that was created for that title. I always have access to it. And if I want to get in and edit it, I can simply hold Command on the Mac, Control on Windows, and double click on it. It's going to prompt me, do I want to promote this title to Marquee? No, I don't, because I created it in the standard title tool. I can come in now, and let's just say I wanted to move this. Let's just say I wanted to make it, oh, I don't know, 150, and sort of stick it down here in the lower left corner. Just like that, no problem. Let's update this. I'm just going to close it and say Save. And you'll see right away, there it is updated, right there in the lower left-hand corner. So very simple to create titles, but also very simple to update them if necessary. And of course, you can also update them from within your timeline. Let me show you how simple that is. What I'm going to do is select this entire clip by pressing T on my keyboard. I'm going to press Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y on Windows to create a new layer. Let's just select just that layer. And I'm going to edit this title in by simply pressing B on my keyboard. So there we go. There's the title just like that. But you know what? I just realized something. Lower left-hand corner is not where I want it because it's covering over our DVE move. So let's adjust the title. I'm going to step into effects mode. I'll just navigate right over here and just click on effects mode. And what I can now do is simply come up and say edit title. It's going to prompt me, do I want to promote this to marquee? I'm going to say no. And what we're going to do now is simply just take this title, stick it in the upper left-hand corner because I know that there's no DVE happening there. Let's just close it up and save it just like that. And guess what? There it is, updated right away. And the great thing is, is that an updated piece of media has been created for the new title. Because remember, this is a new title. We didn't adjust the old title. We essentially created a new one. And here's the kicker. So I now have this BMX in the upper left-hand corner. I'm just going to step out of effects mode here for a second and just hit play. And you'll see that there it is, BMX in. There's my DVE across the bottom of the screen. But here's the kicker. I can come in and I can animate this text fairly basically, as you'll see. I can come in, I can adjust the scaling and the position. You know what? That's really not that much to adjust, is it? Well, guess what? I can actually come right down here to the lower right-hand corner, and I can promote this title to 3D. And by doing that, I now have access to all of the parameters that I had within 3D Warp right here within my title. So I can get in, you know, I can come in, let's say, oh, you know, maybe we want to adjust the rotation of the title. You know what? No problem. There we go. You know, we can come in, we can adjust the perspective just like this. We can sort of do whatever we want with the flexibility of the 3D Warp tool, and I don't need to add it as a secondary effect. So this was a very basic, basic look at titling. We're going to get more into the title tool in its own tutorial, but I wanted to make sure you saw it. You understand how simple it is to create basic titles, because you know what? Creating basic titles is obviously going to be the stepping stone for you to get in and create more complex animations. And the more complex animations are going to come inside of Marquee. And let me just tease this. You can actually create true 3D extruded text right from within Avid's Media Composer. Yes, that's right. In most cases, what it takes a third-party plugin to do, you can do natively inside of Avid's Media Composer. 
Okay, so I hope this basic look at effects and titling inside of Media Composer has given you the confidence to get in and start creating not only basic effects, but to start taking what I've shown you, especially using the 3D warp, and to create some very complex and very cool animations to wow your client. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can feel free to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.